Hey gaming fans, so today I have another Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile and this one is the Sacred Beasts. And I just recently picked this up, the uh, Sacred Beasts structure deck. So I'm going to be using three of these to build this deck anyways. Um, and pretty much what it is, is it's based on two of the Sacred Beasts that are in here, uh, which would be Raviel and Hammond. Um, so yeah, I'll get to the deck and I'll explain my choices. So out of the actual structure deck, we got three of the um, Chaos Summoning Beast. Uh, so pretty much you do need three in this deck for this one. Um, if this, if you contribute this card to special summon one of the Sacred Beast monsters from your hand, which is really good because their, their summoning conditions are pretty hard. Um, and then um, when he's in the graveyard, you can banish him to add one Fallen Paradise, which is the uh, field spell. So definitely three of for this one. Then for the next one, three of the other um the dark fiend guy and he's a dark beckoning beast um so when this card is normal summoned you can add one of the sacred beasts from your um, deck to your hand or one card that has their name in it uh, so that's really handy too because there's there's a few cards that you can pull out with this and then um it, you can only use the effect of him once per turn of course and during your main phase you can normal summon an additional fiend so in other words um it, well it has zero attack and defense so you can normal summon him and then you can normal summon this guy as well so that's really handy and uh, there's a few other fiends you can actually pull out with this card then i went to the phantom sky blaster i believe you can only have one in your deck anyways so i've included one uh, because Raviel does require three fiends to special summon him. So, you know, this will just help you out. He's, he special summons a number of fiend tokens equal to the number of monsters you currently control. So if you summon him um, or flip summon him and he's the only one on the field, you'll get an extra token. But if there's another one of these guys out, you'll get two and you've, you've now met your summoning conditions. And also to help with that, um, the, the uh, structure deck did come with the danger monster, uh, Koopa Cabra. Uh, so, uh, I don't have any other dangers, unfortunately, so I have, I've only included the, the one that came in the structure deck, uh, but if you have other ones, you could probably include them. Um, you could reveal this card from your hand, your opponent only randomly chooses one card from their, your entire hand and discard the chosen card, and then if the discarded card was not this guy, you get to special summon, um, one danger, well, you pretty much summon him and you get to draw a card. Otherwise, if this card is discarded, you can target one danger monster in your graveyard, except himself, and uh, special summon it. That's why it's probably good if you have more dangers to add to this, um, but I only have this guy, so really just banking on his first effect. Then I put two of the Stygian Street Patrols, because you wanna try and get your, your fiends out as fast as possible, uh, especially these first uh, six, any one of them, uh, but you could also pull out one of the other guys and uh, pretty much what he does is when he's in the graveyard, you could banish him to uh, special summon a fiend with 2,000 or less attack from your hand. Um, so really good. It helps accelerate, gets cards out onto the field. And uh, this is the last one of the, the regular summoning monsters. Uh, this one's a tribute summoning, uh, a tribute summoning monster, a dark summoning beast. But you can pull him out with Stygian Street Patrol if he's in the graveyard. And so what this guy does is you contribute him to special summon one of the sacred beasts uh, from your hand or your deck. So um, I guess because they made him a tribute monster, they gave him an extra effect. Uh, so that's really good that it summons from the deck. Unfortunately, um, monsters you control cannot attack the turn you activate this effect. Uh, I guess that's that's you know balances out the card so you don't just get a free 4,000 beater. And then once per turn, you can banish this card from your graveyard to add one of the phantom beasts from your deck to your hand so really good it, it will get out the the phantom beasts that you need or sorry did i say phantom beast <laughs> sacred beast um anyways so we're going on to the um the sacred beast so we got the uh, hammond lord of striking thunder so i play two of those and uh he's basically in there because he's the four thousand beat stick um you have to send uh three uh, face up continuous spells you control to the graveyard, uh, which this deck will have quite a few of, to special summon him. And then if he destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, inflict a thousand damage to your opponent. So that's pretty neat. And then while this card is in face up defense position, monsters your opponent controls can only pretty much only target him for attacks. 
So um, really neat re effect. Um, he's good in, in attack mode or in defense mode. And then what the deck is really based on is Raviel, Lord of the Phantasms. Um, so you, he cannot be normal summon or set. He must be special summon by tributing three fiend monsters. So that's what you're really trying to do, get, get out the fiend monsters as fast as possible. And then each time your opponent normal summons a monster, you get the special summon one phantasm token of uh, 1,000 attack or less, but, but it cannot declare an attack. Uh, so what? I mean, <laughs> it's just a thousand anyways. During your turn, you can tribute one monster. This card gains attack equal to the tributed monster's attack until the end of this turn. So you can then, if you still have that token, you can tribute it off to make him a 5,000 attacker. And then we got two of the last one, and this is the Raviel, Lord of the Phantoms, Shimmering Scra Scraper. I think that's how you say it. Um, he's basically, he's in the structure deck as well. Uh, so I tried to stick to a lot of the structure deck. Um, so he cannot be normal summon or set, and he must be special summon from your hand by tributing three monsters. So it doesn't have to be fiends. So if you have other monsters on the field for some reason, uh, you, he can come out that way. Uh, but his effect is you can discard him from your hand as a quick effect to target one of your Ravil. Um, and for the rest of his turn, its attack becomes double its current attack. So whatever its current attack was, it becomes double. And, and then it can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each or once uh, for the turn. So basically, um, it's going to help you OTK your opponent if he becomes like 8,000 or 10,000 or wherever big he was if he was 5,000 at the time. And then you get to attack every single monster your opponent has. So you'll probably kill them, depending on what your opponent's playing, obviously. Uh, but then if this card's in your graveyard, you can tribute one monster to add this card from your hand, to your hand. So, uh, you know, you can discard this earlier on. And then later on, when you actually get your Lord of uh, Phantoms out, you can actually bring this guy back just by tributing a monster. So pretty good. And so that's the monster lineup. Uh, really just a simple beatdown style deck. Um, to help get out your Raviel, I put in, uh, so this is the spells, uh, two Fiend Sanctuary. Uh, so this card, you can special summon a Metal Fiend token. Um, it's a zero, zero, and it cannot attack, but if your opponent battles it, uh, they take any damage that you would have taken. So if, pretty much if they attack it with a 4,000 monster, you're, they're going to take 4,000 damage. Um, and then you pay a thousand life points pretty much during your standby phase to keep that token in play. So it can be used as kind of a defensive or an offensive or whatever you want to do with it, um, but mostly also for tribute. Then I threw an instant fusion in there just to hit some, uh, you know, some good fusion targets. Um, you know, unfortunately, I, I don't think there's any fiend monsters I could pull out with this. So I just put in some just regular fusion stuff, but we'll get to that later. So lure of darkness. Um, so... Your whole deck is dark, and you can brick in this deck, obviously, so you need help. You need draw power, so uh, I put in two of those. And for some more draw power, plus also something to help get out Hammond, is Shard of Greed, because uh, it's a continuous spell. So you can either use it for uh, bringing out your Hammond, or you could just keep it in play, and hopefully you get to draw two cards. So it just helps speed up the deck. And then for more help, this was also in the structure deck. Uh, Cerulean Skyfire, uh, or Cerulean, however you want to say that. To special summon the Hammond, Lord of the Striking Thunder, using its own procedure, you can also use face-down spell cards you control. Um, from what I understand, it, it doesn't necessarily, they don't have to be continuous, it just says spell cards. So I'm going to think that you could set your Allure of Darkness and use it as a uh, fodder, because that makes sense. But anyways, um, so that, that helps you get your, your Hammond into... Um, the, the field faster and then once per turn while you control an attack position Hammond the striking thunder you can negate a spell or a trap that's activated by your opponent and then change your Hammond uh, Lord of the striking thunder to defense mode um, if if a face up um, sacred beast basically leaves the field you take no damage for the rest of the turn so if, if they destroy a sacred beast monster which would be you know one of these guys then you don't take damage for the rest of the turn so pretty good card. There's a lot, a lot going on with that one. And then we have also in the structure deck um, three of the opening of the spirit gates. Um, so when this card is activated, you add one of the sacred beast monsters from your 
deck to your hand or a monster that specifically lists any of those car those cards in its text from your deck to your hand so you can probably grab something like this um so this is probably like one of the best searchers in the deck and then once per turn, you can discard one card to special summon a fiend monster with zero attack and defense from your graveyard. So you do have quite a few targets to bring back. And once per turn, if you control a level 10 monster, uh, you can add one continuous spell from your graveyard to your hand. So you'd probably want to grab like your uh, your shard of greed, or if you need your uh, these cards back, or any one of them, pretty much you could just grab it. And then for the field spell, we got the three fallen paradise. So um your opponent cannot target any of your your sacred beast monsters um in your monster zones with card effects so that makes them really hard to get rid of because they can't target them and they can't well they probably won't be able to attack over them because it'd be four thousand um but uh you know depending on if your opponent has some battle tricks and then also these monsters cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effect well you control them if you control uh one of the sacred beast monsters um you can draw two cards so it's pretty much uh it replaces itself if you have your um well actually plus one you get a plus one out of it if you have a sacred beast out so pretty good card you know and it's not useless e each turn and then to round the deck out one foolish burial and one monster reborn because you might want to foolish burial your stygian street patrol um or you could even foolish burial one of these guys just to pull out your fall in paradise because uh, his effect is when he, you can banish him to add one of those to your hand. So depending on how your game is going, of course, Monster Reborn is always handy. So that's pretty much the deck. Um, it's mostly, well, it's all spells and, and monsters. There's no traps. Um, I just didn't want to have traps to slow it down. And uh, you want to try and pull out Hammond as fast as possible too. So for the extra deck, I just added in things like Link Karibo because you are playing some level one. Um, this guy's pretty cool because it's just any two effect monsters and then whoever he's linked to, uh, he gives them piercing. So your, your Hammond or whatever can go really big. And uh, if your opponent has like defense mode monsters or, or scapegoats or something like that, you could just pierce right through them. And then just de decode talker, just in case, uh, you know, it helps negate effects and a borrow load dr dragon, you know, just again, just to help you out. Um, so for your instant fusion targets, I got uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict if you have to get rid of an opponent's monster. Or uh, this guy to help you get into some XE's plays. Just, uh, you know, he's a level 4. That's really all he's in there for. And then I got, um, let's see here, not those guys. I just, I just grabbed a variety of rank 4s. I mean, um, Originally, I thought I was going to have some rank threes to play, but I ended up pulling out the, uh, the ability to do that. So really, it's just going to be, you know, some rank fours. It's really whatever you want to play in the extra deck. I don't think you really go into the extra deck with this deck. Uh, it's not really designed to do that except for instant fusion. So anyways, yeah, so that's pretty much the deck. It's just based on pulling this guy out and, and hopefully having this in your hand to do some mega damage to your opponent. Anyways, hope you liked the deck. Let me know what you think down below. Throw some suggestions, comments, anything. I always like to hear what you have to say. And uh, hope you subscribe and talk to you later.